Hey everybody, um, so we're doing our notes today via video um, because we're having a lot of Zoom issues earlier today. So this is just kind of to meet us in the middle here. All right, so just follow along if you need to pause. Uh, feel free to pause so you can write down notes. Uh, we're only gonna write down the things that are underlined. All right, okay. So westward expansion, all right? So when we are expanding west, we are talking at this point in time about the Oregon country and all this area here that is from Mexico, all right? So some of this is gonna have some review because we're talking about all expansion of land, right? And so this is back from the American Revolution, all right? The Northwest Ordinance, right? This is dealing with this land here that is in black, all right? It is all of our Great Lakes states, Right, this area is going to be making us a plan for how to make a new state. Right, and this particular area did not have slavery at all. So earlier in the unit, when we talked about the abolitionist movement, right, a lot of that stuff starts here in that Northwest Territory. Right, and so that makes sense how we have that connection. Also, they're going to create public education in this area. Again, that's where we're going to have that connection with Horace Mann and the education movement that's going to happen here before the Civil War time period. Right? Manifest Destiny, we talked about this before, it is that expansion into all different parts of North America, right? And remember that meant that God told us that we should settle this, these settlers from the United States should settle all of North America. So we tried to go up into Canada, right? Didn't get very far. And then we also are going to be going down to Mexico with the Mexican-American War. Right. So again, we're only writing down the things that are underlined. Right. Um, this little video here, I'm going to put in the comment section below our video. Um, this is some people playing the game Oregon Trail, um, which at the end of our PowerPoint, there will be a link so you can play that game on your own if you wish. Right. Try it out. It's it's old school, but it's pretty fun. All right, so the Oregon country, all right, we start off with the adams onis Treaty, right? That is when we are going to get Florida from the Spanish, but then also the U.S. and Great Britain will agree during this treaty to share the Oregon Territory, right, to be friends, right? And this Oregon Territory is not just right here. It also goes up into Canada as well. Right. Settlers are going to be going along this trail, right? And um, trying to make as much money as possible. All right, all this overland trail is the Oregon Trail itself. All right, all these settlers going across the country, right, from Missouri all the way over to uh, basically the Pacific Coast, right? And then eventually there's so many Americans that are there that we create the Oregon Treaty, right? And that is when the U.S. and Great Britain decide to divide the territory along the 49th parallel, which is the northern border of the United States that we see today. Right. Uh, there are some interesting stories that go along with the Oregon Trail, and one of them is the story of the Donner Party, right, who got stuck in a snowstorm, um, 60 foot, uh, like, big uh, snow piles and everything like that. It was crazy. Um, they're there and they're stuck for months. They actually use, uh, resort to cannibalism to survive. So some crazy, creepy things. These two here are survivors. All right, um, so again, little video that goes along with that, I'll put that in the description down below as well. Ugh, little dark humor for you, right? Okay, and here's just where that lo particular location is now, and you have Donner Lake and Donner uh, Bridge that are named after that particular event. And even with these stories, people still went out west. Right. Um, our next one we have is the Missouri Compromise. You will see this in your web quest on the causes of the uh, Civil War that you're gonna be doing tomorrow. So definitely keep a note of this, all right? And then you don't have to read that section on uh, the Missouri Compromise. You can just type in the answers because you're getting them right here. All right, so a little bit of a review. So the Missouri Compromise, one of the things we wanna do, all right, and we see it in this cartoon up here, we wanna keep the balance between free states and slave states, all right? And we wanna keep that balance in Congress. And the reason for it is that then the, um, in Congress, they can't pass a law for or against slavery, and no one's going to talk about it because it's even, right? And so this new land we've gotten from the Louisiana Purchase, we got to figure out, is it slave land? Is it free land? What's going to go on? So Henry Clay, all right, the great compromiser, is going to be part of this uh, negotiation, and they're going to try to keep this balance of power. So Maine will be a free state. Missouri will be a slave state. Anything north of Missouri will be free, anything south will be slave, right? And all future land was promised at the time to be free. Now let's look at a map that goes along with this. All right, so on our map here, we have the orange states are gonna be your slave states, your tan colored states are gonna be your free states. Um, so slave, 
free. All right, and if we would go through and count these numbers, they would be even, okay? So slave, slavery state would be Missouri, all right? Free state is gonna be Maine, all right? And then this magical little line here in the middle below Missouri, the uh, 3630 line is going to be what is going to divide the slave states and the free states, right? And eventually, these southern states thought, hey, we're just going to expand this line all the way to the coast and then expand all the way into Mexico, and there would be lots and lots of slave territory. Um, obviously, they didn't get as much land as they thought they were going to, but that was their bet back at this time in 1820. Right, so getting land from Mexico, how does this all start off? Well, we got to start off with what happened in that area. So this area is owned by Spain. It was called New Spain. Mexico will um, become independent from Spain, and so then it'll be Mexico, right? So if we look at our map up here, right, all of this land that's in gray was New Spain, owned by Spain, and so all of that land will then become part of Mexico, right? Many Americans are gonna start crossing over from the Louisiana Territory and from the Arkansas Territory, right? And they will start um, occupying the province of Texas and it will be mostly dominated by Americans, right? Okay, they wanna go there because the land there is very similar to the land in the southern part of the US and so it's gonna be good for growing cotton and so they're actually going to bring slaves with them that was not really seen as a good idea by the Mexicans. They didn't like it, All right? So again, we kind of already talked on this, but Americans are bringing slaves with them to Mexico. Mexico's angry, right? And they the reason they don't want to bring slaves into their territory is because they feel that these Americans uh, might end up making them slaves as well, um, which, you know, totally an, a thing to be fearful of. And so they made these laws saying it's like Americans cannot cross the border into Texas, all right? And the Americans ignore it and come in to Mexico illegally. Ironic, right? Definitely ironic, turn of events. Okay, here we got a little political cartoon um, that goes along with this time period. Since we know stuff about the time period, that's why we're gonna see some political cartoons here. This is a more modern one. Right, but we have these Native Americans here that are talking about illegal immigrants and saying this stuff, complaining that they're taking their resources, they bring their guns, all these other things, and the uh, illegal immigrants they're referencing are the people on the wagon train, and their wagon train says manifest destiny or bust. Right, so they're referencing all these people coming into that Native American territory. So again, a play on words uh, in historical events. Right. Okay, so continuing on, all right, Mexico is actually controlled by a dictator at the time, a general called General Santa Ana, right? And um, he tells all these people that are in, all these Americans that are in the Texas province, so remember province of Texas is just like a small area of Mexico, right? And they tell them to disarm and deport. So basically, give us your guns and leave. Um, Texans don't really like that. Okay, um, and so they will have a rebellion, and in part of that rebellion, they will have a battle at the Alamo, right? Here is the Alamo here, and at this epic battle, there was 200 Americans, 4,000 Mexicans, right? The Americans, it's a story of where everyone died, right? However, from this event, right, everybody dies in this battle, all the Americans do. But from here, right, um, so even the people that surrendered were killed, right? So horrible, horrible story. But what ends up happening is that the other Texans that hear about this event at the Alamo are inspired, right, of the bravery of those 200 people, right, and that who never gave up. So they're going to have the saying, remember the Alamo, Right, and so that's really what we want to write down here because again, it's underlined. All right, so remember the Alamo, remember the bravery of those people, all right, who never ever gave up. All right, here's two famous people who died at the Alamo. All right, we have this guy Bowie, all right, he is the guy who uh, comes up with the Bowie knife, all right, which is this giant, huge, like hunting knife, I suppose. Um, and then Davy Crockett, which, um, if you're unfamiliar with him, right, there's some Disney movies about him, I'm sure are on Disney Plus right now if you feel inclined. 
right? So from all of this, Texas will then become an independent country, right? It will be called the Republic of Texas. They're only around for 10 years as their own country, but they have their own president, Sam Houston, Houston, Texas, that makes sense, all right? And um, they are one of the very few states that were their own country before it became part of the U.S. The other state that was its own country before it became part of the U.S. was Hawaii. They had a queen, all right, their own country and everything like that. So right now, Texas is not part of the United States historically. They are their own country. So we have the country of the United States, we have the country of Texas, and then the country of Mexico, right? Um, However, again, they're only going to be, Texas will only be its country by itself for a small period of time, right? The president at the time is this guy named Polk, right? President Polk, right? And at the very end of his presidency, he annexes Texas. Annex means to add, right? And he added it as a slave state. Well, there was no free state added. So that means we have an uneven balance of power in Congress. This is not good. Also, it's showing us that this president just wanted to um, be part of all this stuff to add more states, add more land. And he was a southerner, so he's adding a slave state. So we can kind of see a conflict um, going on here. Um, also, by adding Texas, the people of Mexico are upset because they're, they were kind of maybe hoping maybe we might get Texas back, right? So this is definitely going to get us into... The causes of the Mexican-American War. So our cartoon here, this one's a little weird, right? So this is supposed to be the Mexican Eagle, right? So that's on the flag of Mexico and it has, the cartoon was titled Plucked, right? So it's basically the Mexican Eagle before the war, right? And then after the war, right? All of its feathers were plucked out, right? So kind of saying that like Mexico totally lost this war with the United States. Okay, so obviously the annexation of Texas makes Mexico mad, right? And here's where we get the causes of the Mexican War, right? Okay, these are very simplified, all right? But again, kind of big ticket items here. And then also another map to help us out. So remember, before the war starts, right, we, uh, Texas has just been annexed. Before, it was the United States, Texas, and then Mexico. So three separate countries, right? So our causes, we got manifest destiny. We've talked about that a ton before. It's pretty easy. We want to expand. We're expanding south, right? The south wants to add slave states. President Polk just did this by adding Texas as a state and making it a slave state. And now there's no balance of power, right? Mexico tells us we cannot have California. So C is California, right? We demanded to get California. Remember, there's gold in California. That's why we want it, okay? Um, and then... Mexico sees that we have finally annexed Texas, which annex means to add, right? And so they see this, all right, they're really upset, right? And we've been not getting along for a while, right? That's the last kind of straw that they, um, that then leads us into war, right? We're not obviously doing that, all right? We're just going to take the notes on it. So for our Mexican war itself, all right, Mexico is crushed during this war. The United States military is, um, it just has more people, more resources, etc. Um, and the United States um, really just completely dominates. Okay. So there, there they are. They're fighting. See, have their dukes up and they're fighting. <laughs> all right. So our effects. All right. And we will have this video here in the description down below for you guys to click on. All right. Is that the treaty that ends the war is the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Okay. All right beautiful sounding treaty, right? And so part of the treaty is that we'll have the Rio Grande, right? Will be the Southern border of the United States. So that river is still the uh, boundary uh, between Texas and Mexico. Um, Mexico also give up or seeds California and New Mexico. So on our map here, it's all this area here that is in um, pink, okay? Outlined in red, right? So that whole area was the California, New Mexico territory. Obviously now it is California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and a little bit of New Mexico and a little bit of Colorado and Wyoming, right? Um, the other thing we're going to have is we're going to then buy, after the war, the Gadsden Purchase. That's this little itty bitty section of land right here, right? And the reason we end up buying this small little bit of land, right, is because there are mountains here, right? Okay, the Rocky Mountains, and we want to build a railroad to California. Well, we could very expensively blow up parts of the mountains to put the railroad through, 
or we could buy this little piece of land and put the railroad around the mountains. So that's why we need that last little piece. But once we have that, the continental US is complete. The only things we are missing as part of our country are going to be the states of Alaska and Hawaii, right? which we'll, we'll get those eventually, but not, not quite yet. Um, one of our biggest impacts or effects of the Mexican-American War is increased sectionalism, right, or sectional tension. And that's the fight between the North and the South over this new land. So we got all this new land from Mexico. Is it going to be free? Is it going to be slave? What's going to happen, right? And obviously we don't agree and that's going to lead us to war, right? So here's a really quick one, again, only looking at the things that are underlined but again, this is a review slide, right? So the Mexican-American War ends with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The U.S. gains all of Texas to the Rio Grande River, okay? Um, Mexico give up territory in the southwest called the Mexican Session. So that's this area here that's in blue, right? And again, Session just means to give up. And then a couple years later, they're going to buy this Gadsden Purchase area here to complete um, a railroad and complete the United States. Right, so here again is another map, right? This one's a good one that if you wanted to pause right now and take a screenshot or a picture of this, this would be a really good one to have. Um, if have all in this expansion and that sort of thing, right? Really good map. And there's Speedy Gonzalez because he's cute. All right, so some other things to review here to end um, what's going on. So again, a couple more topics here. And some of these things you're going to see in your web quest that you're going to be doing on Friday. So sectionalism, we've seen this before, that idea that you're creating different sections of the country that are going to have similarities, but also then be different from each other. So think north and south, right? Um, we have this question with all this new land we got from Mexico, which is all this in green. What do we do with that land? Is it going to be free land? Is it going to be slave land? Does the federal government decide? Do the states decide? Um, what's gonna happen, right? And this fight is obviously part of this getting closer and closer to civil war, right? So again, some of these things you're gonna see in your web quest. So it's kind of like you're double dipping here. So this area that we got from the Mexican-American War, right, that's in green, right, is that this is the Wilmot Proviso section here, right? Okay, this land, uh, this guy named Wilmot wanted to make this land free right, all free territory, but obviously that's not going to fly in Congress, right, because they're not going to make that decision. Um, it's never approved, and so we still don't know what to do with these territories. Who gets to decide? What do we do with them? So people are still kind of just avoiding the issue of slavery, right? We then get our Compromise of 1850. And again, some of these things you're going to see in your web quest and stuff like that tomorrow. So our Compromise of 1850, again, another map, they eventually make California a free territory, right? Um, this free state is determined by the federal government. Congress made that decision, right? Then we're going to figure out, well, these two territories, Utah and New Mexico territory, the stuff in the kind of reddish color, brick color, I guess, um, they are going to get to choose for themselves. So the uh, people that live in those territories will get to vote, right? And if they vote for slavery, it'll become a slave state. If they vote for a free, uh, free state, it'll become a free state, right? It's up to the people that live there, right? And this is called popular sovereignty. We've seen this term with the Constitution before in this class. So this is a term meaning that the citizens get to choose, right? And so the other thing we're going to have with the Compromise 1850, so there's lots of things going on in here. So this section of your web quest is actually quite substantial because there's so many things. Um, the other thing in the compromise will be the Fugitive Slave Act, which made it a federal law that citizens had to help return any runaway slaves to who owned them. Um, and so basically it made it a federal crime if you did not help, right? And it means that anybody, no matter where you were, you could be returned to like wherever your plantation was before. So that means you cannot escape just to these northern states in green. You have to go all the way to Canada now. Right. And so that's where we have this picture here. So if you have not been to Detroit um, on the J Detroit, if you uh, are on the coast there, uh, this is the Detroit River. Right. There is this beautiful statue. Right. And it's of these um, people that are part of the Underground Railroad that they are um, trying to get to Canada. And the statue looks to Canada. So you can kind of see right over here. There is a little red and white flag. That is the Canadian flag. So that is Canada right there. Um, across the river. So very um, poignant um, location for this particular statue. 
right? Um, and here is our little link here for playing the Oregon Trail. That one is also going to be down below for you guys to enjoy. So make sure you're doing your web quest on Friday, all right? Um, you're going to see some stuff that's a little similar here and there. And always, as always, if you have questions, please make sure you send them to me and remind. All right, bye-bye.